Hey guys, what's up? It's Big Jack Films here, and welcome to another review. <sighs> I really don't want to review this movie. I really don't, guys. I mean, what a perfect way to start the new year, by taking a look at a nostalgic film that hasn't held up whatsoever. <sighs> but, given my awkward curiosity and love for the 90s, I simply have no choice. Today, I have to review... The Spice Girls movie. Now, keep in mind, guys, when I was a kid, it was hard to admit to liking this kind of stuff that was mostly aimed at girls. But I gotta be honest in saying that the Spice Girls were actually kind of cool. Their music is really fun, they all have a different personality, and their music videos are kind of stylish. However, less can be said about their first and only feature film. Because they seriously can't act, tell a story, or get us through an hour and a half of pointlessness. I was unfortunately dragged into this movie by my sister at the time, and while I remember sorta liking it, it sadly does not hold up as much as I remember it being. So let's dive into this ass from the past and see why it should have stayed in the Nickelodeon Studios time capsule. <laughs> So we start off the film by introducing the Spice Girls at a concert. There's Mel B, the toughie of the group, Emma, who is the adult equivalent of Bubbles from Powerpuff Girls, Victoria, aka Discount Baroness from G.I. Joe, Mel C, whose name sounds more like a brand of Ecto Cooler, and of course my favorite of the group, J -J 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 Jerry. Oh, you can spice up my life any day. After a pretty decent, yet LSD-slowed concert, we then cut to the next scene where the girls are pouting to their agent, played by Richard E. Grant, and then briefly bumping into Elton John for some reason. What are you doing here? A very brief cameo. Me too. By the way, the girls are also followed around by this film crew shooting a documentary with a director played by Alan Cumming. Why is he in this movie? What relevance does he have to the film and the story? I don't know. I have no idea. I have no freaking idea. Maybe Alan Cumming needed an audition tape for Josie and the Pussycats. That's the best possibility I can make. We then see the girls head out the door to see fans and... <laughs> ow, ow, screaming fan girls are making needles shoved into my ear holes, ow! So the girls retreat to their British double-decker bus, and we see, HOLY CRAP, I WANT THAT FUCKING BUS! Okay, horoscopes! I don't believe star signs. I mean, Jesus, did they get Miss Frizzle to design that three? I WANT ONE OF THOSE! So, I guess the plot of this movie, if there is any, is that the girls have a concert prepared for the Albert Hall in London. But then we cut to another plot, where a group of Hollywood screenwriters want to make a movie about the girls. Great, it's a movie about making the movie. We've never seen that before, except these. But it does raise the question, does this make the film self-aware? I don't know, maybe I'm thinking too deep into this. Let's just see what Discount Carl Denham has to say. This is what our movie should be about. They're young, they're cute, they're hip, they're wacky. Yeah, but can they act? Yeah, but can they act? You best watch yourself, movie. I'm the only one who can make jokes here. I just got an idea. It's the Spice Girls. Mm -hmm. There's five of them. And they're singers. I love it. We pitched this afternoon. I think we just saw a recreation of how this movie got greenlighted. We then cut to another plot where Clifford is getting a call from his boss who is straight out of a Bond movie? Remember. Okay. By the way, I should point out one of the better things about the film is the set design. Sure, most of it steals from other more popular films, but they do look kinda cool, even for a movie that doesn't really need it. Anyway, we then go back to the girls, who are busy with rehearsals for their concert. Now remember, the camera is the window to the soul. Window to the soul. Oh hey, I didn't know Herb was in this movie! But then we get another plot with the girls looking after a friend of theirs who's pregnant. Jesus, there's more subplots in here than Return of the King! Just wait till you lot start having kids. That'd be really weird. Duh! When did Jerry turn into Rulin Lenska? I hate to interrupt. There's the small matter of an extremely live gig on Saturday. How many more pointless dream sequences are in this movie? Okay, I'm just gonna do this the honorable way. 
We then cut to, oh god, another freaking plot, which involves a newspaper company trying to find a way to crush the Spice Girls' career. Who cares if they climb to the top of Mount Everest on an ostrich? Or if they find a cure for deja vu? Not me. Or if they find a cure for deja vu? Not me. Not ah, great, the movie just turned into a shitty early YouTube poop. Enough. I can make it happen, Brad! I can bring him down! Yes! Who's gonna help me, Brad? Who is gonna help me take on girl power? I'll find someone, Kevin. I just wish you wouldn't get so upset. And I wish we could fix this bloody hole in the ceiling! Seriously, Mike, do you know how plumbing? We then return to the film pitch subplot as the screenwriters pitch the movie to the girl's agent. The girls play five sisters whose parents disappeared during the January Harrod sale. Now they live at home, struggling to support an elderly grandmother. Their only hope at breaking the cycle of poverty lies with the middle sister, Melanie C. What do you think? I think it stinks. It stinks, and I don't like it. Well, enough of that. We then cut back to the girls who are busy pointing out their own stereotypes. Seriously, movie, stop stealing my thunder. As the girls decide to change up their personalities by doing, what else? A pointless photo shoot sequence. Like I'm at a bad cosplay photo shoot. He sounds great, but where the hell is this guy? I'm here. Pick oh, a fucking ready? story! Hello. I mean, you're now adding SM Dungeon Neo to the thousands of plots in this? What does all this crap have to do with the Spice Girls? Choose a plot and stick with it, you damn movie! He's very good. He's gone. He does that. Anyway, we then cut to the girls at a fancy after party and whoa, what the hell is Jerry wearing? I mean, it's kind of attractive and all, but did she get Sansa Stark to come up with the design? Although they're both redheads, so that wouldn't be too far off. So the girls begin shooting a music video, but some unexpected extras show up to the set. We didn't agree to have this lot dancing with us. I mean, I know you said it was going to be tacky, but this is tacky. Hi, that's not homophobic. Why are they stopped? They stopping because these clowns suddenly appeared. Stop it! What's wrong with you people? You're making Tatooine look less racist. Sand people. Sand people. Sand people. Sand people. Sand people. Sand people. Jawas. Disgusting creatures. We don't serve their kind here. <laughs> what? Hey, your mother. My mother. See. Si. Your mother. Hey, your mother. Oh! <laughs> So after that insulting moment, we see the girls needing to take a bathroom break out in the woods. But hey, they've spoofed so many movies in this, they might as well do their spoof of the Blair Witch Project. I think we lost, you know. Aliens? Aliens? There's fucking aliens in this movie? Were you dropped on your head as a kid movie? This makes the aliens in Indiana Jones look more logical! You really don't give a shit, do you? You're fired, movie! You're fired! Please, hand in your filmmaking license and any other studio property you pissed on! Oh, but it gets even weirder. One of the aliens cops a field and Jerry ends up making out with one of them. This scene is so uncomfortable I keep expecting the aliens to spread out tentacles and turn this bit into a hentai! Okay, we're gonna need to take a break before my brain ends up stroking out. Pray for Master Chief to fry these fuckers, people! We got 50 more minutes of this shit! Ah! So the girls are instituted to a dance boot camp, cause why the shit not, where they are instructed by... I'm going to show you my port de bra. Please don't show me your port de bra, that sounds disgusting. Hi, Arkham Asylum? I think one of your patients broke out again. Yeah, bring the bed. It's definitely needed. Right. 
What the hell? Okay, I guess the movie decided to go all Full Metal Jacket on us. We then cut to the girls sleeping, which I assume Jason is gonna kill them, given I didn't add this sound effect. As we see... Oh, God, no, movie! No! You put your bullshit back in the toilet and flush it properly! You do not need to smear your own crap on the screen! We're all gonna be scared of this live show. And that we might not be able to sing. Oh, and it's gonna be a complete disaster. We're gonna fuck our what? We then cut back to the screenwriter pitch scene. Seriously, it's not even a different day, it's the same fucking scene! As the screenwriter pitches another idea. Inside the pilot's pocket is a computer disc with a virus encoded on it that is so deadly. Destroy the world. The British Prime Minister has absolutely no choice. He has to call in the Spice Force 5. You know, that would have made for a much better movie. Oh Christ, now you're spoofing Mission Impossible! Jesus Christ, guys, you're making the guys who wrote an epic movie look like Mel Brooks! power equalization between the sexes hmm. Bob Hopkins what the hell are you doing you could have easily spent that day thinking about that offer Disney kept making you for Roger Rabbit 2 but instead you chose to be in a pointless cameo for our crappy Spice Girls movie did they literally just grab you and say hey we need a shot for the trailer Bob did you seriously think that much of a fucking low cat? Okay, I don't know what the fuck I should do here. I mean, this movie is driving me nuts. Every single scene is just painful. I don't know, what should I do, girls? You're going to see a doctor. You've been acting like a granola bar. Well, it's not my fault the movie was made so poorly. Besides, I hate granola bars. Don't listen to her. A pit bull with a toothache's got a better sense of humor. Cuter, too. You know what? You're right, Serena. I gotta take this movie on with humor. Thanks. I'll see you guys later. I figured it out. You got meatballs on the sides of your head to go with the spaghetti inside! <laughs> anyway, we then get a pointless scene with the girls taking some kids on a boat ride. Why is this scene in the movie? I don't know. Maybe the kids won a Nintendo Power Contest. That didn't get cancelled, but they end up capsizing, which leaves a major blow of press and tension with the girls and their agent. So what do you say? You, you don't want to turn up here tomorrow night? Well, maybe we don't. I'm going home now. See ya. They just jump all this is doing my head in! If you're looking for a fight, you're gonna lose. I think I may have just started the breakup of the Spice Girls. No, I don't think so. You could definitely blame Jerry for that later. Everything's fine. No, it isn't. How bad is it? Imagine how bad it could possibly be. The reviews for this film aren't kind, Chief. You might want to consider that Spider-Man deal with Marvel. I don't know, get the guy who directed Evil Dead or something. We then get that classic cliche where they all get back together on a city-filled night and remember the simple days of their friendship. But who cares about character development? We need a pointless trial scene with an even more pointless cameo! You have been found guilty of releasing a single that is by no means as kicking as your previous records. You are sentenced to having your next record enter the charts at number 179 before dropping straight out the following week. Now if you'll excuse me, I've got some yak testicles to eat. <laughs> So the girls decide to see their expecting friend again and take her for a night on the town, which leads them to a fancy nightclub. I love this song! Just to be right What can I say? I love me a good club! Sweet 
Sweetheart, you tear that shit up anymore and I'm gonna have to buy you dinner. Damn it, Batman! I was just about to play with Discount Mocha over there! Finish the review. Okay. But their friend starts going into labor as the girls rush off to the hospital. And I'm not kidding here, this is the best part of the movie. It's honestly the first time in the film that I'm actually invested in what's happening. And on top of that, it's actually kind of funny. Does anybody know how to deliver a baby? Don't look at me. Okay, the first thing to do is put your legs together. Well, that's a bit late. You should have done that nine months ago. Oh, don't make her laugh. Do not make her laugh because it'll just shoot out like a cannonball. <laughs> That whole bit is really well done! It's honestly kind of refreshing after all the crap I've been through. There's also this scene where the girls are asked to talk to a kid that's unconscious. Is it pointless? Yeah! But there's a real sweet and charming moment with this scene. Well, what should we do now? I don't know. Maybe we should just talk to him. What are they gonna say? Well, maybe you should take your top off, Jerry. <laughs> Not now he hasn't. I wish I was woken up by three hot girls at my bedside. That would be freaking awesome. <laughs> uh, uh, what happened? Wait a minute. I went unconscious. Hey, maybe I'll wake up to find three hot chicks sitting by my bedside. <laughs> So their friend finally goes into labor and she gives birth to... The girl! Now that is girl power. But the girls are late for their concert as they rush off in a pointless overthought action scene. Get out of the way! Get out of the way! Man, the new Grand Theft Auto is stepping up this year. Coming this summer, it's Grand Theft Auto Spice City Stories with new and exciting features such as stalking the Queen of England, plowing through London traffic, waving around atop a bus on crappy green screen, pointless Batman sound effects, a bomb for some reason, and new 3D models that make Thomas the Tank Engine look like Mad Max Fury Road, all while a screenwriter describes every single moment. Spice bus is racing across London through Trafalgar Square. Pigeons are flying up. Guys are diving into fountains. And the Queen says, Oh, you're right. Isn't that the push one driving? Grand Theft Auto Spice City Stories. Get your copy now only for the PlayStation 1. Hey, it looks better than the actual Spice Girls game. That game was shit. So the girls arrive at the concert hall, and I swear to God, I did not add this. First of all, how dare you insult a movie that is Jesus compared to you guys? And second of all, that's not even the same fucking location! Which makes this whole spoof completely pointless! God! But everything turns out for the best, as the Spice Girls make it to perform their concert with costumes that would more likely pass them off as Joel Schumacher Batman villains. I really want to apologize. <laughs> I'll never get tired of that joke. Thank God that's over. So that was the Spice Girls movie, and what the hell? Ugh, of course we get that fad of the late 90s and early 2000s where we would get a fourth wall post credit scene. Oh, let me guess, Nick Fury's gonna come out and ask them to join the event. Oh, you lot. Someone's watching us. Oh, yeah. Hello. Oh, hi. Hi. Hello. 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 Um, hi, girls. Y you talking to me? Did you break the laws of physics and reality? Do you know what I always wonder? Why do people sit there at the end of the film and watch the credits go up? I don't know. I want the movie to end as much as you girls do. Do you know, I know where they're going to go. They're going to go down the pub and then they're all going to go to yeah. Chippe. Mm. Well, if you girls would like, I can buy you a drink. It's my treat. I like your dress. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all right, you know what? Fuck this. I'm detonating that bomb that was on your bus. 
So that was the Spice Girls movie. It sucks. Need I say more? Now, please, keep in mind, the Spice Girls themselves are extremely talented, their music kicks some serious 90s ass, and I'd highly recommend their albums. But I just wouldn't recommend this movie. They can sing, they can dance, but they can't act for shit. There's a bajillion plots that don't resolve properly, the cameos range from okay to what the fuckery, the characters are bland, the skits make no sense, and do I even need to bring up the aliens again? This movie is a total mess from beginning to end. But you know what's really messed up about this movie? It actually kind of has a certain charm and nostalgia to it. I mean, as much as I bash and make fun of it, I did actually like how self-aware it was. Everybody in front or behind the cameras knew exactly what they were making, a cash grab. But they did at least try their best to have some fun and comedic timing with it. The gags are pointless and extremely cheesy. But there were a few times I was laughing along with it. I guess it's because I don't mind a little cringe-worthy humor since I do some of that myself. The sets are pretty damn good for the budget they had. Seriously, I want that fucking bus! And while the Spice Girls aren't great acting-wise, it's just them being themselves. To be honest, they seem like they would be kind of cool to hang out with. But the problem is that this should have been a feature-length music video, kind of like Moonwalker, which in terms of musicians making movies is a much better film. I'd say overall that the movie was a product of its time. The Spice Girls were the biggest thing in the world at the time, so it made sense that they would make a movie to cash in on it. And that's essentially what it is, but it's a corny little time capsule of the late 90s. Am I glad I watched it again? Yeah. But does it bear any rewatchability? No. I'd give it overall a 3 out of 10. It's nostalgic, but really pointless. But now I want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on the Spice Girls movie? Let me know in the comments section below. Until next time, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Big Jack Films, signing off.